Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today, it's another trying to fix video. Another video where I bought something faulty off eBay and I'm going to do my best to repair it. Now, as always with these videos, I've never looked at this item inside before and I've never tried to repair it. So just take it purely for entertainment and not as a how-to guide. What I like is the seller's actually done a dotted line with a... Uh, and little pictures of scissors so the reason he's done this is so I don't cut the box open now the thing in here I actually know what's in here this is one of my earliest memories not this particular one but basically it is a car that works by filling it up with water now obviously the idea is it comes with a little fuel can and uh, you put water in the fuel can and then the car will only work once you add water to it. But obviously it's not the water that's making it work, it is the, uh, the battery inside. But it must only be activated when the water touches it. And I think that's going to be quite interesting. Now, this is one of my earliest memories. I don't know how old I would have been. It wasn't this one that I had, it was a black... Do you know what? I was going to say it was a black one, but it was a police car that I had. That's it there. I wonder if there's any pictures. Yeah, that's the one there. What? I wonder what date this is from. I have to try and Google it. But I was really, really, I was really young, really, really young. But I remember being amazed. From memory, it had like a kind of a reddish colour rubbery kind of fuel can. And I remember being amazed that you could put water in it and then it would work. Yeah, that's it there, 100%. Right, so when I seen this... Because I often search on things on eBay, like faulty things. When I seen this, I just thought, uh, yeah, for me, it's going to make quite an interesting one. So here it is here. Now, there is a little axle, a little thing missing here, you know, the things that go there. So right now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how this works. Obviously, it's something to do with when you put water on something, it's making a circuit, which is then going to let the 9-volt battery make it work. But I thought it'd be quite an interesting one. Let me show you the eBay listing. So it was the best offer and I offered £7 and they accepted. Something like this is never going to have huge demand. It's just for me, it's the kind of novelty of having it when I was young. So let me show you the actual listing. So there you go, it says Vintage Toy Ideal Guzzlers Spares or Repair 40 1980 Yellow Corvette. Right, 1980. So that means I would have been four years old, which I suppose fits in, doesn't it? Because... I don't know if I can really remember much uh, much before that. So it was up for 11.99 free postage, but as I say, I got it for seven pounds. Let me just tell you what he wrote about it. Right, it says for spares or repair, motor not running, battery compartment is clean, missing the holding tab from the rear left wheel and has scuffs where to the wheels as pictures, some minor sticker wear, measures approximately seven inches in length, box is in overall good condition for age, so small tears to the corners, minor edge wear and crease into the box window as pictured, missing. Oh, missing oil canister and instruct. Oh, okay. Oh, do you know what? I didn't. I didn't read that before. That's the problem. I was rushing through it and I just bought it. I didn't read that about the oil canister. That's kind of what I wanted to see. Remember, I said it was a red one. It was a sort of like a a red see-through type rubber thing that you poured into. Oh, that's a little bit of a shame because that was kind of the whole novelty of it. Anyway, look, I'm still going to be able to get it to work by just pouring a bit of water into there. I don't know what this thing here is for. Hmm, I actually don't know what that is for. Is that how, is that how it's supposed to go? Okay, well, listen, I could, I could watch a video on it, but why don't we take it apart to begin with, and then we might be able to... That might actually make sense when we take it apart as to how this actually works. Right, so I've got a few bits. I've got this to suck the water up with and drop it in. I've got a 9-volt battery. I did notice now that this is the wheel that actually drives... The, the motor drives this wheel, and this is obviously loose, isn't it? So I hope it's not as simple as just the fact that this needs clamping back in here. Right, so these are the instructions on the back of the box and it says here to insert a 9 volt battery and it says fit a rubber band supplied to the around the rim of the left wheel so that's basically yeah, this one here so this is the only wheel that drives the actual car and it says fuel in your guzzler fill the fuel can with ordinary tap water fuel the guzzler by squeezing a small amount of water from the fuel can into the fuel intake 
uh, on the bonnet. Guzzler's motor is now on and ready to zoom off. And then basically you turn this to make it run, so you turn it to the right to make it run faster, watch them spin out at the fastest speed and turn to the left and it travels far farther and slower. So you can become an expert by adjusting that. And it says, uh, it says, Guzzlers will stop running if overfill to prevent this and to maintain top performance. Remove the drain plug and empty water from crankcase after two to four runs. So obviously this is the drain, uh, the drain thing here, isn't it? So let's pop the battery in and actually see what's happening with it. Right, so let's pop it in. Is that working? Yeah, that's working. Let's drop some in here. Oops. Not sure how much you're supposed to put in. Actually, did it just say a couple of drops? Squeezing a small amount of water, but I don't quite know what a small amount is. Right, okay, so... Oh, here we go. There, it is working. Wow, got that fast. Slower and faster. Listen. Oh, and then when the water drains out, does it just stop? How do you stop the thing? Or do you just empty out the water from it? Yeah. So when the water goes out, okay, right, so basically there is nothing wrong with it. So this is not going to make an interesting video. It just needs, I need to somehow clamp this wheel back on. I'm amazed at how quick it goes. So let's take this thing apart because to me that's going to be the most interesting thing off it to see actually how it, uh, uh, you know, what's, what's the thing that makes it work inside? It must be the water is just purely making the circuit. Right, so let's just pop this battery out. Now, how does this thing come apart? I can't see any, can't see any screws on it. Also, I have to work out exactly how I'm going to fix that bit there. Right, I think it's one of those things that's not really made to be taken apart because if you have a look, it looks like the top body is just held in here and this sort of uh, just ever so slightly clips around the black thing there and the bottom there, can you see here? And also here and here. So I presume these are the only things that's uh, keeping it in. Let me get a, a different tip. Completely broke the black plastic on that one. This is this is, uh, this is a nightmare. This is definitely not made to be taken apart. Probably have to glue it all back together again. There we go. Right. Okay, we've got some sort of uh, brownish lump of glue there. But all that black stuff is just purely me trying to get the plastic out. You can see there, absolute nightmare. So that's what it is. Can you see it's just basically flat on top here. Each one of these are broken. Flat on top, and then when you push this down, it just basically, it's got like a, it kind of comes up over here. So it forcefully goes over it and then stick it stuck in there, but there's no real easy way to get it out again. There's no give on that. I suppose looking at this now, it would have been easier to probably leave that out there to get it out like that. Right, okay, so this is it here. So what do we have? Oh, oh this is quite interesting. Right, so originally, so the uh, front axle is quite rusty, as you can see there, but look, can you see this here? This is like a little Scalectrix thing, isn't it? You know, like a Scalectrix trigger, where you push your trigger down and it goes across here. So we've got the blue lead from here, from the negative of the battery, and then the red lead from uh, the motor goes up to this point here, 
and depending on where we have this depends on how much power is getting pushed through doesn't it hold on now so what was it right increases it wasn't it to the right yeah so when it's here it goes quick and when it's here it goes slow now if you have a look it is rusty there I wonder whether when the seller did it originally it was just like that and it didn't run so we'll have a look at that in a minute now what happens here so water goes in here how does the water there make a connection how does the water in here so something happens in here must be to connect up something in there there's a load of oh the brown stuff is just left over from there so I suppose they've put the brown on it to protect these screws from rusting and also can you see they've put all that around here so these look like they're little transistors are they these ones here really I need to take this board off to be able to see what's underneath here I still don't know why putting water in there what it connects up to but by me doing this I wonder if I'm going to break it because maybe that is this part of the circuit underneath there should we do it anyway because it's of no real value is it I mean, don't get me wrong I don't want to break it but it's uh, it's pointless if I just uh, if I don't understand it I bet you it was just on that bit of rust there and it wasn't making a contact and the seller didn't read the instructions at the back to realize that you had to turn this and if he had turned that it would have sprung to life no, I'm gonna be able to get them undone without taking all this stuff off Right, excellent. I've got one screw. Is now loose. Really want to see what's underneath this to see how the water makes the circuit. And then also, what's stopping the water? What does the water then just drain away through a little hole? Because the water's not going to be getting used up, is it? Or is it getting used up somehow? But there's no steam coming out of it, is there? So what's it getting turned into? I can't undo that little one. Right, so now I have to pop off that little clip around there. Uh, now, before I get all the comments, I know that obviously this is very bad because this has been around for a long time now, and essentially I'm ruining it, especially for a collector. But remember, it was sold as not working. Nobody else was putting offers in on it. It's not exactly as if it was in high demand. It's not that I want to break it, but for me, the, the interest of how it works is more important than the £7 that I spent on it. Now, I'm not intending to break it. I do actually want to have it working at the end. It's just that uh, I want to know how it works more than having the end result working. So I know, obviously, if you click these, you're going to be looking at this and kind of crying because you probably already know how it works. And uh, by me scraping all this off, I'm scraping the circuit board and everything. But you know, my intention is to learn on uh, because I remember this as a kid, and years later I did used to wonder how that did work because for me it's a bit of a dream. I can't fully remember it. I just remember doing it on the kitchen floor and filling it up, and I remember my mum telling me that you know you fill it with water to make it work, and I remember thinking that was absolutely amazing. Uh, so when I and then I, obviously I've forgotten about it for the past thirty odd years. And uh, when I seen the listing, I thought, oh, wow, you know, I remember that. It would have been nice to actually get the same car, the, the, police, the police one. Okay, right, OK, we're getting there now. Right, let's see what is under here. OK, so did that? Hold on. So this thing's been spun round, so that needs to go under there. Right, OK, here we go. How does that work? Still doesn't mean anything to me. So you're putting in water, you put water in here and it must come up through these holes. Let's put some water in and see what's happening. Right, so I'm going to put water in here. Oh, look. Ah, right, fine, 100%. You don't need much and they come up on those holes which must make the circuit between this screw and this screw. So now, let's see. 
let's work this one out, we should be able to trace so everything's covered in the thing so it doesn't short out but do they really need to have so much on top? yes I suppose it has to be on top because if the water if it was to leak and then go on top it's also going to make the circuit isn't it? so it's something to do with these two connecting to each other that makes the circuit I'm a bit confused why they've got this blob around here though I would have thought it would have gone around both of them you know, I mean, in a way, it looks like it's been insulated from it. Oh, sorry, it's the screws. What am I on about? It's the bottom of the screws that make... Ah, right, OK, OK, of course. Right, we know now when we put the water in here... There, can you see it comes up there? So, obviously, it doesn't need much water in there before it fills up. And then all that's happening is these two screws are shorting against each other then via the water, which is then... Uh, joining these two bits together which is making the circuit so if I put everything back together and if we just get a bit of wire and join these two things or get some pliers join these two together in theory it should uh, it should work now the drain thing what's the drain thing about so how much do you have to put in I wonder right, let's just see now let's zoom out a little bit I just want to see if I put it in here will it come straight out the bottom comes out the top so first of all it wants to come out here but then it does come out the bottom as well so I suppose if you were to block this up yeah then it comes out the bottom right okay uh, so it is as simple as that, isn't it? And that's where it drains away. But what I don't understand is why doesn't it... I suppose gravity, does gravity just eventually make it go? Because what I'm thinking is you put it in here, isn't it just going to stay there for ages? But it did say overfilling it stops it from working. Guzzers will stop running if overfilled. Why would they stop running if overfilled? Because if the water's making the circuit, I mean, there's nothing else in here, is there? That's just going to be go straight down to this hole here. Let me just blow in it. Right, okay. You can't see what I'm doing, but what I'm doing is I'm blocking up this hole, these two holes, and it is coming through to here then. So, okay, I get it. I do understand it, but I don't understand is why overfilling it would stop it from working. Because overfilling it should just keep it going for ages, shouldn't it? So the idea that you only put a few drops in is because otherwise it will just keep running and running for ages. Well, if you just put a few drops in, it will go to here, and then I presume just drain out to the bottom. You know, gravity will take it out to the bottom. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the overfilling bit's confusing me. Well, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit here, and then we can start working on it again. Well, okay, it's much tidier now, so I can see fully what's going on. So let me just see what's happening here, because look, this has a... This has a metal thing here, and that sits on that there, so that moves around there. So obviously this is all part of the circuit. So in other words, we need the circuit to go from the negative here, the blue here, to the positive. And the positive goes all the way through here via this one here. So let me just get my multimeter. I just want to see what's going on with this thing. So I've just got it on continuity. Definitely got continuity there. But now, why is this masked in green? Is it because you don't want continuity here? Probably. So, is there going to be continuity here and here? No. So, the water has to spread from here to here, I bet. I don't know why we've got two screws. Is that just to enhance the connection? Yeah, so there's no continuity. So, we need... We need this to be in contact with this, and that's what the water... I bet you that's what the water's allowing. Let's just put some water on here. I think that's just going to drain straight off when, it, when it's like this. No, it's just coming straight off, you see. That must be it, mustn't it? 
and that's why they've got the green thing in the middle here because it has to bridge the gap between here and here. I presume that's it. So it has to make the circuit all the way through from this one here Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily put it back together just to see how it is working. Right, so I've got a battery in it. Let's just see now what happens. I'm going to get some tweezers and start shorting things out. Right, so when I short out these two pins here, the two screws, it does work, even though there's no water going between here and here. So, so this, this must be where the water's doing its thing. Ah, oh, no, 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 it's not doing it now. Right, I don't know what I've done, but I've stopped it. I've stopped it from working. So it worked when I shorted these two together a couple of times, but then it stopped. Now it's not doing anything. So have I somehow blown one of these transistors or that resistor there or something by shorting across here? Right, I've been researching about these two components here and I'm nearly 100% positive that this one here is a transistor. But this one here I'm not too sure because I know it looks like a transistor but I can't really get any information about this. Some, some of it looks like it's something to do with a voltage dropout or something or other. But uh, yeah, they're not really bringing anything up. The only reason I've found this one is because I searched for a load of transistors. Uh, to then show alternative ones. But look, if I test this one with my meter, so if I have my meter here, and if I go to diode test, there, and if I go between, if I use the red lead to the middle leg, and then go to one of the outer ones, you can see it's coming up with uh, 0.685. And then if I go with the other side there, so keep the red on the middle, you can see uh, 0.685. Now if I put the black lead to the middle and go with the red lead on the outside, it's open. So it's not connected. And on the other side, it's open. So basically, that means it's an NPN transistor, this one here. Right, OK. And uh, these are the sort of uh, specifications of it, I believe. But that doesn't really mean anything to me. So this is a mark in here, CSBD135C. Now, this is the one here which is confusing me. The MK, I think it's MK. I mean, it could be UK. I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of hard to make out. See there? Right, maybe it's UK G905. But again, it's not uh, it's not bringing anything up. But uh, if I test out this one, it's just showing me open the whole time. So if I go between, uh, if I go to the diode test now, and if I just bend those legs down there, again, red one to the middle, black on the outer, you can see nothing. If I go that side, nothing. If I put the black in the middle, go that side, there's nothing. And there's that side there, the other side, there's nothing as well. So that says to me that unless it's not a transistor, I think that's the blown component. Now, I've been going around and I've been trying to see kind of where it where everything goes so basically this is the how i've drawn it here all right so if it makes sense so i've just kind of scribbled out what's what so basically this one here just goes straight to this hole here yeah so this is like the negative goes straight to this one here now the positive goes to this side of the resistor it also goes around to this side of the the leg here of the let's call it a transistor and it goes to this leg of this transistor here 
Now this side of the resistor goes to the middle leg of this transistor and it also goes to this screw hole here. You know the ones, these are the insulated ones, so that's why I've done that kind of blob here because that means that's the like, insulated ones. And then this leg of the transistor goes to the middle leg of this transistor here. This side of the transistor goes all the way up to this one here and also this one but this is insulated so you have to kind of scrape on the inside for it to work. So basically that leg goes to this one here. So if I was to put it together and for example short these two then all that's happening is the positive is going from here to right away to here and then it's going to work because this side, well I'll show you, this side all that, that all works okay. So let me just put this here like so. Temporarily put it back together, put this in here, and now watch this. So if I uh, if I short these two together, so in other words, I'm bypassing everything and I'm just putting the, the, the negatives already going to here, and then the positive is going straight to this thing over here, then it will work. So if you have a listen now, there you go, just need a bit of pressure there. And this is interesting, when I move this along here, you can hear that it's increasing in speed. Let's... Uh, let's push it. Yep, and if we just take that completely off a minute, if I get my meter here and just put it to normal ohms test, watch this. If I go between, for example, here and here, look at the reading, right? And so obviously it's, uh, the motor's not running as quick then, so we're at 24 ohms. Now watch, move a little bit along and it will drop to like, for example, 20, move a bit along and it will go to 16 until we've got a, a complete short. 11, 5, until we're over way here, or all the way over here, and then we'll have a complete short. So that's, uh, that's interesting. I just want to see what happens now. Yeah, so obviously the, the meter's beeping, but can you see it's giving different readings? Yeah, so I'm thinking that when I messed around with shorting out these two bits here, I think that I blew I think I blew whatever this is here, but the problem is I don't know what this is. So what I'm going to do is, and by the way, it's not working if I put water in now. It's it's not doing what it's uh, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Even if I put the screws in there, it still it still doesn't work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scrape off all that solder mask from underneath, and I'm going to try to unsolder this component here, and then I'm going to put it in a little tester just to see what it is testing. It might give me some indication of what it is. Now, I know this is kind of ridiculous because it was a working toy. All I had to do was put this connection on at the end and it would work. But you see, I'm learning so much more now and the fault finding and stuff. I know it was silly because it was working, but now it's not working and I'm, I'm enjoying this fault finding more rather than just putting the uh, thing on the wheel, put the rubber band on, and yes, it, of course it would have worked, but I wouldn't have understood anything. So at least this way, I'm trying to get my head around actually how it works. I think I might have worked out what's going on. I think, bearing in mind, remember, I really don't know anything about electronics, as you can obviously tell. So basically, this side here is a negative, and this is the positive. So. I think what happens is, look, so we've got the positive here going to the first part of the resistor. It also goes to one part of the transistor and also to that leg of that transistor there. Now, this is a negative coming up here. So when water goes across here, can you see it joins? So basically, when water goes across here, I think then this must recognize that it's got, that's, uh, that is picking up some different resistance between here because there's now water on it and it connects this one to this one here. And when it connects to this one here, it then puts voltage through to the middle pin of this one here, of this transistor here, which then connects this leg with this one here, which then connects up the whole circuit to allow the positive voltage from here to jump to here to then go through to the motor. So I think what's happening is this component here has failed, this one here has failed, and it's not recognizing that these two things are being touched together. Basically, that I believe is going to be the faulty component, but I am going to unsolder it and then put it on my little component tester and see if that shows up anything.
Right, so I've got a little component tester here. Let's pop this in. Leave it down. Let's see what it says. No, there you go. No unknown or damaged part. Right, okay, let's just swap it around the other way. But it would pick it up anyway. No, so I'm definitely confident that I've blew that I've blown this. I just I just don't know what this is. And the thing is, because I can't get the readings from it, you know, when I look online that doesn't mean anything, then uh, even if it was just a transistor, is it a PNP or is it an NPN? How do I how do I find out what this is if the markings don't mean anything? Okay, so what I'm working on now, I know it's probably completely pointless, but what I've done is I have got a pack of transistors that I got from like CPC and it's got different transistors with it. So it's like a kit, a transistor kit. So first of all, I put in this one here, which was an NPN. Now remember, I don't know if the one that came out is a transistor or not, but the first one I put in was an NPN. And all that happened was when I applied nine volts to this side here, just using my bench power supply, I got nine volts out on the end here so when I put it into the car obviously it's just going to work all the time as soon as the battery is connected so then what I did is I've now put in a PNP I've put the next one along so I'm just going to work my way along and now I've just put the voltage on it and to begin with it was only reading like one volt at the end but then I put a tiny drop of water across it and it did go up to nine volts so I'm wondering I've sort of got my hopes up now so let me put the positive there I've got nine volts on these leads here now if you watch this I've got my multimeter here to zoom out a bit put it to DC voltage I'm just going to go on the negative and here and can you see at the moment it's reading like 1.7 volts 1.4 you see it's uh, yeah 1.4 now if I put my finger in a little bit of water and just put it across here like that and now if I go between here and here can you see it's reading 8.7 and now if I just kind of mop that up again it will go back to 1.5 so I think I'm going to give that a go see what uh, see what happens it would be great if it was to work again because it was definitely me that messed it up in the first place still not quite sure how I managed to mess it up by just shorting across there All right, let's uh, let's cut the excess off these leads here be real careful because everything's exposed at the moment I just want to see if it's gonna if there's gonna be any life in it at all all right so let's pop the battery and hopefully it won't do anything and then when we put water on I'm hoping it will do something right, I've got to be careful now I can only put a dribble in Right, okay, so that's not working. I'm just going to try to put a little bit of water across the top. There you go. Thing is, though, it's not going to evaporate off there, is it? It will just keep working forever on the top. Now, why didn't it work when I put it in the normal hole? Oh, yes, it does. It does work. Let's just see if it wears itself down. Oh, yes it does. How lucky am I? I really thought I'd messed it up. So it's a PNP transistor that needs to go in there. I thought it might be some other thing. Why though, when I went across here with uh, with this, did it? was it just coincidence? I'm tempted to do it again to see if it breaks again, you know. Because that's the only thing that's confusing me and I have a load of these transistors. So for the sake of the price of a transistor, I'm going to do it again. Yeah, listen. Quite weak though. I oh, know it's not. It's getting weaker, isn't it? Now I wonder has I have I uh, messed it up now? I don't know. 
Oh, there you go. Yeah, I've seen it pop. It popped here. And now it's going on all the time. Okay, good. So, it was me then that uh, done it. It's just that the difference this time, it must have failed in a different way. And it, uh, it popped rather than... Let me feel that. Yeah, it's really warm. Excellent. I'm pleased about that. So, although, yes, I've been the, the cause of all the problems here, at least I've learnt along the way. There's still still loads of things I don't understand about it, so I haven't learnt that much, but uh, it all helps, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to solder in another one of them now. God, I know this is sad, but I'm really enjoying this one. this one here just to see where it's failed. Right, so if I put it to diode test and uh, put the black one in the middle, so I've got 0 0.22 there, 1.6 there, open, so this should be open as well, and it's not. So uh, yeah, so it's failed on that one there, these two I think. And there we go, it wears away again. Fantastic. Right, so what I have to do now is I have to put this insulation thing back on it and then I've got to put that UV mask over the whole thing again because uh, remember I've scraped it all off from everywhere. So everywhere that had UV mask on to begin with, I've got to put it on there again. Otherwise, any bit of spillage is just going to set this thing off. So what I want it is I, I only want it so the water down here is going to make contact, not the water spilling over the top here. And then I have to work out how to get something to put this, you know, keep this wheel in place. Also, that's a little bit bent, so I'm going to have to straighten up the axle a bit. And as well as that, can you see there's corrosion on this front axle here? I'm going to have to clean that up as well. So there's going to be quite a lot to do, but none of that's going to be that interesting. So I'm just going to be fast forwarding through most of that until I've got a solution about what to do here. Okay, so this is a UV mask that I'm going to be using. This particular one's green. Right, so I'm now going to get the UV light on that to set that. I'm going to leave this side clean because remember the screws have to connect onto this side before I then put the UV mask over this bit here. Also, I did forget to put the. I was supposed to put the glue on there, weren't I? I wonder, do I need the? Do I need that waxy glue stuff on it? Is that going to make any difference at all? Uh, I suppose if I put that on, I could have done away with less UV mask. See what I'm going to do? Is I'm just going to slap that on here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of heat from the. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of heat from the hot air station just to melt that back into its place. Oh no, it's the wrong side, isn't it? It was supposed to be on the other side. Whoops. Right, okay, let's take that off. Good job I remember that before it went rock hard. Right, yeah, that was on the other side of it. Okay, let's get the uh, UV light on that first. Right, it's going to take some time because it's quite thick. I'm just using, you know, the UV, UV light here from these little rapid repair things, these cheap little things that you buy online. This is probably going to take about 15 minutes, so I'll come back to this later. Okay, I've been holding that on it for about 10 minutes. It's starting to set. It takes absolutely ages. So what I'm going to do, because my hand's getting tired, I'm just going to slap some of this glue back around the uh, the top components here. Hopefully it will just kind of like work its way into place and stuff melt around.
Right, okay, that's a horrible mess again. So hopefully, when it goes hard, it will uh, it will uh, keep the water away from the bottom of those components. I suppose I could just use glue gun, but uh, I might as well put the original one back on. Like right, you can see that with the heat there, this is kind of oozed out of it again. Right, so I'm just going to keep putting the UV light on this until it all goes off. Right, okay. That bit's done now, although it does look like someone sneezed on it, <laughs> it's, uh, the UV mask has literally just penetrated every single bit of that glue. But it's, uh, it should serve the purpose for keeping the water away. If it drips along here now, it should get rid of it from there. So remember, when I put it back in the board and put the two screws in, I have to cover the whole area again in UV mask and then put the UV pen on it again. This is it here. You can see it's hardening up nicely now. And again, it's all covered the components. So hopefully, if water gets down there, it won't short on those bits either. So now what I have to do is I have to put it all back together and I've got to try to clean this up. So I'm going to get rid of the rust from here using a fiberglass pen. I'm also going to put a fiberglass pen against this axle at the bottom here. And I think I'm going to smear silicon grease on this axle because it's probably inevitable that when you're pouring water in here that a bit will throw, flow through this hole here and end up in this area. That's where it's going to sit because it's kind of the lowest point. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. taken it out now so I can give it a good clean. Actually I've got some sandpaper, I'm going to do it with sandpaper, it'd be better. You can see all the bits have come out of the plastic now and also the axle is cleaner. So let's pop that back in. the battery contacts a bit even though they're all already very good. And I'm also going to clean up the little screws as well that, uh, that the water goes across. Before I go any further I'm just going to make sure that it's still working now. Fantastic. Right, so now what I have to do is I have to cover this area here in the UV mask as well to make sure that no water can get down there. I'm really thinking, why can't I just use, why can't I just use glue gun? It's going to be so much easier. I'm just wondering why they use this to begin with, because I mean glue gun has been around for a long time, you know, the hot snot, the heatable glue, I don't know. Not sure why they use this. Just because they used this before, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use this again. I mean, I think it, this is what they they used. There we go. So easy to put on. The problem with it is, it's just a drying time takes forever. Right, so now I've got to sit over it again with this silly lamp. Right, I'm still waiting for that to go off. So in the meantime, I've just been thinking about what I'm going to use here. And I think I've come up with something that's really going to work well. I bought a load of gears ages ago when I was trying to fix up. I think it was the Wii, the Wii a long time ago. And uh, if you look at this one here, that is going to fit on there perfectly. There you go. So I don't want to force it on anymore. It needs to go on a little bit more. But look, that's going to be... That's pretty solid on there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to get some sandpaper now. I'm going to hold it here and I'm going to round it off a little bit. Nice thing is it does fit perfectly just inside the wheel. So it's kind of like made to measure. Uh, and uh, yeah, because that does actually have to spin. Yeah, that has to spin like that in there. So I'm just going to round it off a little bit just to make it look a little bit less like a gear and a bit more like that. Then I'm just going to paint it black. I'm going to leave it like that. Can you see I've just sort of rounded it? But when it's in there now, obviously it still does look like a gear, but I think that looks quite nice. So now I'm going to paint that black. Well, actually, I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to paint it black. Straightened up the axle as well, so it's a little bit straighter than before. There you go, that really is a good fit. Look at that. See, that can freewheel, but now that's only going to spin with the motor. So yeah, I'm very happy with that one. Do you know what? I think that will be a lasting repair. 
Now I haven't got the right size rubber band for it, but what I have got is my daughter's got these loom bands from years ago and I picked out some black ones. So I'm just going to put probably three of them around the wheel and then that will help it give it some grip. That's still hardening up. It's starting to go now. It's squidgy underneath, but there's definitely forming a skin on the top layer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a wet wipe. I'm going to clean the car inside here as well, and also underneath around here just to get rid of the dust and any tiny little bits of rust that's just sat on the plastic. It's actually in really, really good condition. So I suppose the very fact that the box has been kept means that whoever had it looked after it. Right, I'm ready to put the top back on it now. So you can see that this has got a skin across the top now. So hopefully that's going to keep the water out. I've put a bit of silicon grease down here and everything's been nicely cleaned up. So let's put it back together and that's the wheel there. You can see that if you're like a couple of foot away, you can't really notice the difference between them. Yeah. So let's pop the top on. I'm not sure whether I'm going to have to glue it on or not or whether it's going to work like this. <laughs> Brilliant. It's just gone back on. It didn't go on with a nice click or anything, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to go with that. Now, it does say on the box here to insert this band, rubber band here for spinning action. So I don't really know what spinning action means. Maybe maybe when I put it on here, it's going to sort of spin round in a circle, like a bit like a donut. So maybe this rubber band will have to be removed. I'm not too sure. Right, so that's that there. Let's pop the battery in. Put the cover on. Like so. And now let's pop a little bit of water in it. There we go. Slow. Right, let's put a little bit more in. Slow and fast. It doesn't last very long. Or maybe I haven't got the plug in. I wonder whether that's uh, wonder whether that's going to affect it. I wonder how long it's supposed to last. Well, I'll tell you what, let me bring it down to the kitchen and then I'll get a better idea of how far that actually goes. Because the thing is, you don't want it going on for like 100 metres, do you? I suppose you only want short bursts, otherwise you're constantly going to be just having to, it's just going to be whacking into the walls all the time. Well, I've been testing this out now for the past 10 minutes with my son. And the problem is we were using these loom bands and they just keep pinging off. So it's quite good fun because there's not much traction, so it kind of spins out of control and stuff. But then every other go, what happens is it either comes off or it gets caught up in the gear here, which then starts slowing down because it's messing, messing with the, the motor gear there. It's acting as like a brake. So uh, what I've done is, check this out. Look at that rubber band there now on that back wheel. And that is basically from the Echo speaker, the uh, thing that wraps up the lead, you know, the, the power cord. So that's absolutely perfect. So now it should give it some good traction. So what we're going to do to begin with is, let's just put it down at about a, a low speed. My son's just going to put a couple of drops of water in, just to uh, just sort of to, to see, see how it goes when you haven't got much in there. And then what we'll do is we'll put the speed up more and we'll put a little bit more in there. There you go, so you can see now it goes in quite a nice straight line, doesn't it? So now let's, uh, obviously this kitchen's not big enough, so now let's put the speed up a little bit. Well, let's put the speed up max, so now put a little bit more water in it. There you go. Can you see now it gets much more speed? So that's it, wheel spinning there. Yeah. 
So when you put more water in, it does last for longer. Yeah, it's losing speed now. So it is, it is okay. Now if you had a bigger room to play with, or if you were like in a school hall or something like that, then it would be, I think it would be quite fun. It's just in a small room like this, you just haven't got the room to let it really do its thing. So you can see there, as it took off, it was gaining speed and then it would have started to do like a donut if there was enough room. Sometimes it will do that straight away. Let's just give it one more go, Ben. And also if you add too much water in, so really I need to empty the water out now because sometimes it will just go on for ages. So just put a bit in, right, there we go. Now you see, it was starting to turn there. So it would have, uh... <laughs> well, you, you get the idea. It's got a fair bit of speed to it, which is, um, which is pretty good. So that is it. That is the, uh, the guzzler. So last time I seen one of those was when I was like, Oh, however old, four or five years old. So personally, I've quite enjoyed doing this one. As far as a fix is concerned, then obviously it was a bad fix because all I had to do was take that gear off there and then, that, well, sorry, put the gear on because it was just missing and it would have been working just fine. But then I wouldn't have got to see the fact that it's got the Skeletrix thing for the speed here, you know, to adjust the, uh, the resistance across it. I wouldn't have seen that. I wouldn't have seen how it works on the inside. I still don't fully understand it because I'm not sure why when you short the things together, it burns out the transistor, but yet when there's water across it, it doesn't burn out the transistor. I presume it's because with the water, it's just changing the resistance, and when I put the tweezers across it, it's a dead short. If you know the answer to that, please put it down in the comments. It's probably a really straightforward thing, but for me, it's not straightforward. So yes, if you were doing this to make money, of course you would have just changed that over, and it would have been a five or 10 minute job. I turned this into half a day, but at least I got to see the inside of it. And uh, yeah, personally, I quite, I quite enjoyed it in the end for just a cheap, simple toy. The inside for me was actually quite confusing and not really what I thought. I didn't think it would be like that. So hopefully you might have got a bit of entertainment from it too. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more China Fix videos. Take care. Bye now.